Hi everybody, it's Holly Honjo. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. This is the place where I share all my secrets, um, quite literally. <laughs> um, so stick around, hit that subscribe button, give me a big thumbs up if you like what you see. Um, anyway, let's get to it. Today I want to talk a little bit about how I have overcome my binge eating. Um, I haven't really binged for a good few months now um, and I just want to go through the things that I have done um, that have really helped get me through it. Before we start though, I do want to add a little disclaimer, I have never been diagnosed with um, an eating disorder or a binge eating disorder. So I, I don't even know if I, you know, would actually classify as having that disorder, but I do know that I definitely have uh, binge eating tendencies. So this video is obviously my non-professional opinion on the things that I did to help me overcome that. For me, my major binge eating time was in the evenings. So the first thing that I did was I started intermittent fasting, which means after dinner, um, around six or seven at night, I said, okay, that's it, I'm not eating anymore. Um, I'm not gonna lie, while I was still drinking alcohol, it was really tough because um, I was still drinking alcohol, so I wasn't technically um, fasting at that time. I managed to stop eating, but I was still drinking, um, or I would just have to push my eating window a bit later if I did um, continue to eat. But just um, doing the intermittent fasting, so stopping after dinner and then fasting until like 11 or 12 the next day. So 16 hour eating window, eight, no, 16 hour fasting window, eight hours eating um, has seemed to work really well for me. And it just sort of gave me, got me into the mindset that I wasn't gonna eat. Whereas if I had it sort of open, you know, without the intermittent fasting, I would have just kept eating in the evenings. The second thing I did was I quit drinking, so quit drinking alcohol. Like I said, when I first started intermittent fasting, I was still drinking, um, so obviously I wasn't really doing it properly. As soon as I quit drinking, I was able to stop the binging because for me, a huge part of when I drank was just eating, mindless eating. You know, I would go, I would buy the booze, but I would also buy uh, prosciutto, cheese, crackers, chocolate, crisps, you name it. I would then sit there when I'm drunk and eat all of that. Um, and you know, when you're drinking, it just, it makes you have a much more voracious appetite. So, you know, I was eating like a second dinner um which i obviously did not need um and when i drank as well i was out of control you know i didn't care what i was doing um and i wasn't it, it really was like mindless eating just i would get these like urges to just stuff my face and eat as much as i could um sort of until the point that i felt kind of sick um so definitely giving up quitting alcohol helped me with the binge eating the third thing I did was to stop restricting food, stop thinking of foods in terms of good or bad or I can't have this. Um, and I have just given myself absolute permission to eat whatever I want. The only caveat is that it needs to be sort of a balanced diet. So yes, I can have cookies. Yes, I can have pizza. But if I have pizza for lunch, then for dinner, I need to be a little bit more um eating like veggies, um, maybe a little bit more protein, a little bit more veg, a little bit less carbs. Um, so just really trying to maintain a really good balance of the foods that I eat um, and drinking a lot of water as well to help kind of keep me satiated throughout the day. The fourth thing I did was I was a huge secret eater. I mean, even now, my husband does not know the extent to which I hid food and drink. You know, I hid the alcohol um, and I also hid all the food from him. So for me, secret eating is massively tied to binge eating because, for example, I would buy something like this and I would eat the whole thing to myself. Probably over one day, um, I could eat this to myself. And this was sort of like a daily occurrence as well. 
you know, I would buy it and I'd probably have some in the afternoon and then I'd finish the rest of it for dinner or after dinner. Um, or maybe, you know, I'd eat this over two days because don't forget, I'd have my bars of chocolate as well. But now, like I said, I do not restrict anything. So if I want something like this, that's fine, but I have to share it with the family. So when I buy things like this, I put it out on the side, on the counter, and everybody has some, which number one means that I am not eating that whole thing. You know, I just, I don't need it, do I, quite frankly. Um, number two, it means that it's out in the open. I am not, uh, what's the word? I'm not tempted to binge eat it myself. Don't get me wrong, the temptation in my head is still there. You know, it's years of habit of coming home from shopping and putting something like this away in the cupboard where nobody else is gonna look. Um, and then, you know, the temptation to want to eat it by myself. But for me, it absolutely has helped in not hiding these things, not pretending that I don't eat things like that or I don't want things like that, because I do. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, that has been massive for me. Any, you know, sweet stuff that I buy, absolutely, I can have it, but I have to share it. The last thing I have done is, and this doesn't always work out so well, but the last thing that I have done is do not shop when hungry. That is the biggest mistake you can make. And, I mean, I got caught up in it last week as well, to be honest. Um, but even if you don't think you're hungry but you're a little bit hungry you shouldn't go shopping because last week I went to Ralph's and before I went in I kind of got in my head that I was going to sort of get some M&Ms um so I went and I picked up um an apple pie half an apple pie which I was going to share with the family I just bought a half a one which was fine because you know like I said I don't restrict anything then I made my way round to the um M&M aisle in the M&M aisle, I saw some chocolate bars, and I will, so for me, the it's like the pound pluses, the huge chocolate bars, I'll buy those and eat those, um, you know, just sort of stuff my face with them, eat them in secret, but the smaller, you know, like the kind of fancy chocolates, I'm actually okay to just have one or two pieces or like a little line of those. So I saw these chocolates and I picked them up um, just because they looked tasty and I do like a little bit of chalky in the afternoon with my coffee, like a little, give me a little line, give me a little hit of chalky. Um, I also then saw some um, chocolate cookies, soft chocolate cookies. I don't even like soft cookies. I think they're horrible. I like them crunchy. But for some reason, I was like, these look good. I'll pick them up. Even in my head, I was like, I don't even like soft ones. But just, I was kind of feeling a little bit hungry. And I was like, I put them in my basket. Then as I walked over to the M&Ms, of course, they only have the family size packs. Um, and I was stood there and I was debating, you know, which one should I get? And I picked them up. And I thought to myself, you know, I came to my senses and I thought, if I buy this huge bag of M&Ms, because I wasn't thinking that I was gonna share this, you know, I was I was thinking of hiding it for myself, you know, old habits. And I thought, if I pick this up, I will have to eat the whole thing. And this is a family size bag. And I won't be able to stop myself from eating them. And I don't actually want, I just wanted a little bit of M&Ms. I didn't want a whole family size bag. So I kind of, I came to my senses and I was like, what are you doing? I put the M&Ms back, I put the cookies back, I kept the chocolate bar and the half an apple pie because like I said, I still have those um, chocolate bars actually. I've had about half of one of them, uh, but um, they're still in the cupboard. And the apple pie I shared with my family, those were okay. But the cookies and the M&Ms, things that I would tend to sort of binge eat by myself, I put them back and I ran the hell out of there because, um, you know, I know what I'm like, but damn it if old habits don't die hard because it was such a habitual thing for me to go to the shop and just grab all these sweet things and put them in, go home and hide them. So yeah, just don't go shopping hungry. Um, I was in there the other day again and I was very, very tired, very tired and kind of, I just, I, I, think, I think that was the day actually that I was so tired and I just wanted sugar and excuse me, it's really hard to kind of fight yourself in, in those moments. So if you can, don't go shopping hungry. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but those are kind of my 
tips and the things that I have done to stop secret eating, to stop binge eating. They've really worked out really well for me the last few months, um, just by kind of adhering to those rules. Um, I feel like I have managed to not binge eat, um, and I'm feeling really good about that. Before we go, I want to talk about my weight this week. So, as I suspected, so last week, if you recall, I was sick and I went down to 207.2 pounds, which most of that was water weight, <coughs> excuse me, and as I suspected, my weight came back up, so I'm sitting at 209 this week on the dot, which is an increase of 1.8 pounds, I think. I'm okay. I mean, would I have liked it to have stayed low? Yes, but that didn't happen and I kind of knew it wouldn't happen. So I'm okay. We're moving on. It's a fresh week. Uh, we're just going to make sure we drink a lot of water. We're going to get back on the veg. Uh, I was still sick last week and on the weekend I went out for a friend's birthday to a winery, to several wineries. We had a great time. We got a limo. Um, I stayed sober, super proud of myself, that was a great opportunity, you know, I debated should I go, shouldn't I go, but in the end I thought I need to prove to myself that I can still go out, still have fun, and I don't need to drink to do that, and the point is I wasn't there to, you know, drinking doesn't make the occasion fun, it's the people you're with, and guess what, I had a great time, so proud of myself for not drinking, but the food situation was a little bit difficult that day, didn't get my walk in, and I didn't get all my water, I drank a lot of water, but I didn't get all my water in, Sunday was my wedding anniversary, um, it wasn't a great day either for eating them, we went out, we got burgers and ice cream, so once again I didn't sort of balance it out with the veggies and I don't think I drank nearly enough, um, so these are things that are all probably sort of, I, I think I would have been steady, um, but definitely that sort of carby high sodium food that I had over the weekend wouldn't have helped, um, me this week um but yeah i just want to be upfront about things um i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it gave you some ideas or helped you um you know th binge eating is such a hard thing because it really it's so mental a lot of it you know you're you're really pulled to eat food and you don't even know why and a huge part of this journey this time for me has really been you know, writing things down, talking to all of you about it. And when I'm talking about things, I'm realizing so many things about myself and identifying my behaviors, my triggers. And I know, for example, like don't go shopping when you're hungry, but you know, you always hear that. But I didn't really think it really did affect me. But recently when I've been shopping and I've been a little bit hungry, I see myself starting to get distracted in the shop. And it's like, you gotta, you, you know, you gotta get blinkers on and you just got to grab your list and get out of there. Um, do what you got to do. Um, I'd love to know if you have any other ideas or any other ways. How do you stop yourself if you're binge eating? You know, what tricks or hints or tips do you have that, you know, might be able to help other people as well? Let me know. Leave a comment. I love you all so much. Um, thank you for supporting me every single week. Love all the comments. Um, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.